So let me uh, again welcome each one of you, um, uh, colleagues that are here. Uh, my name is uh, Oliver Chinganya. I am the director of the Africa Center for Statistics, but also the chief statistician for the UN, the UN Economic Commission for Africa. So today uh, I will be moderating this uh, particular se session, which is actually the 16th Start Talk session for those that are joining for the first time. So we've been having quite a series of these in the past. Uh, and the main really objective of the uh, the series is really to provide space for dialogue uh, regarding data, data statistics and innovative tools with data experts and users. Uh, this particular session also we're going to be aiming to promote better understanding of statistical concepts and alternative data sources and tools. Uh, the, they are positioned as a knowledge sharing platform uh, promoting dialogue among experts and users. It also, you know, this particular pl platform in, uh, in aspires to unpack complex statistical uh, concept and terms uh, for better uh, information utilization. So the Stats Talk session itself, we invite, uh, first of all, ECA uh, staff, ECA members uh, in, in, in here, member states themselves, uh, development partners, uh, those that are coming from the academia, and basically the data users that people are, uh, who are interested in data. So today I want to welcome you to this particular one, uh, which is going to be on creating national reporting platform for sustainable development goals in Africa. And I think this is an exciting time because we only have a, a, you know, a six years before the, um, the 2030 agenda. And to be able to talk to these issues, that would be very, very um, uh, appropriate. So this particular one, I think the session is going to be introducing open SDGs as an open source, a free to reuse platform for reporting SDGs. So if you allow me uh, with that little introductory, I, I would like to, in my capacity now as director, to perhaps uh, provide um, uh, what I would consider opening remarks and give context to the conversation that we are going to, to have uh, this, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, depending on where you are. So the SDGs are our shared ambitions, vision for more equitable, prosperous, and sustainable future for the global, at the global, regional, and national, and local levels. However, realizing that the vision relies on having an update, high quality data that can inform policy making, drive accountability, and empowers our citizens. The transformative power that SDG data can have will only be realized when it is shared openly and made easily accessible by everyone. With only six years left before 2030, it's more critical now that the power of data is enhanced by increasing its visibility to quick decision makers, uh, including policymakers, analysts, journalists, and the public in, in near real term for the responsive accelerate, accelerated change we desire for the people and the planet. This is why it is important that we leverage on open source platforms like the Open SDG uh, to disseminate SD data as frequently as quickly as possible. On Open Data SDGs provides a, re, a ready to use a customizable platform for publishing not only SDG indicators and progress reports, but other indicators for various frameworks based on the user's interest. To mention just a few, it allows for an automated data updates, um, supporting automated ing ingestion of, um, of, of from national data management and improving the timelines of data dissemination. It localizes indicators and metadata, which means that it is possible to add or modify indicators to, uh, to better reflect the national development priorities and contexts. It also has exceptional uh, sub-national uh, disaggregation uh, by supporting the tracking of SDGs at the local level, uh, which are crucial for identifying disparities and targeting in, uh, interventions. Um, also, the other aspect of it is the language translation. You know, it allows reaching diverse audiences across the continent, uh, as well as uh, robust visualization tools, including interactive charts, maps, and uh, dashboards. In addition, it's free, uh, making it an accessible solution for the national statistics offices and other SDGs data publishers across the African continent. Such platforms provide an opportunity that empowers everyone to track progress, identify challenges, uh, challenges and uh, collaborate on providing solutions. Frequent and timely data dissemination is essential to keeping the SDGs agenda on track and holding all stakeholders, stakeholders accountable. Of course, getting SDGs data on uh, onto uh, an open platform is, is just that the first step. It's really the first step to do. And there's much more that we can do. So we must also focus on improving the data quality, disaggregation, and accessibility, 
and making sure that data speaks to the diverse experiences and the perspectives across our continent. This is a key priority for the Africa Center for Statistics as we work with partners to strengthen national statistical uh, capacities. I would like, therefore, to use this opportunity to challenge uh, the statistical fraternity present today to embrace the use of emerging and innovative technologies and techniques, including artificial intelligence, big data and data science, and other, among others, in the production of data and fulfilling data gaps in SDGs and Agenda 2063. I call upon in particular the young people who are tech savvy to take on such occasions for impactful action on the continent. So as we delve in this particular Star Talk uh, series today, I, I'd like to encourage all of us uh, to explore how the power of data uh, dissemination platforms can maximize the impact and usability of SDGs. By embracing tools like open uh, SDGs, we can unlock the, the full transformative potential of SDGs at the 2063 and national development plans and build a more sustainable, equitable future for all Africans. So I'll leave it there and to really thank you for listening to me uh, there. I want to mention that uh, we are partly late just because we have another session that uh, we are running. We are you know, consulting ourselves, sort of uh, a brainstorming session that we're having today and tomorrow. So we had to break to come and attend to this very, equally very important. So if you feel, if you see a little bit of rush, please do understand this because of that. So I want to... Uh, again, uh, you know, just to thank you for being part of this journey um, to, for the Stats uh, Stats uh, Talk Africa uh, webinar series. At this point, really, I'd like to inform everyone that uh, this particular uh, series is, is uh, organized in collaboration with the others, including uh, Office of National Statistical Office, uh, the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, and the Ghana National uh, uh, Statistical Service. And uh, first, we'd like to receive a presentation that will be creating national platform. Uh, for sustainable development goals in Africa, which will be delivered by Sarah Besley uh, from the UK Office of the National Statistical Office. Uh, and that will be followed by you know, uh, two use case examples. One will be by Sarah Dunda from uh, the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, and another one by Cyrus Kwesi uh, de Paul from the Ghana uh, uh, Statistical Service. I want to thank three of you really uh, for taking time to educate us on some of these things, which are pretty, pretty critical. Uh, and then we'll, all of us will have an opportunity, you know, to ask questions to the speakers uh, and to have a much, much uh, open understanding of what this open SDG and implementation actually entails. So without further ado, uh, let me invite uh, Sarah Besley uh, to make a presentation. As I mentioned, she's from the National Statistics Office. She's been there for the last four years uh, and she's been working various areas across uh, you know, social surveys, uh, her current role is an international development team uh, working on sustainable development goals. This includes managing open data SDGs, um, sorry, managing SDGs and providing technical assistance, guide and, mater and mater materials uh, for those wishing to use the open source platform for to report to SDG data. An important part of this is also helping the UK's national reporting platform uh, on this. So without further ado, uh, Sarah, over to you, please, if you could take us through the presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Oliver, for your introductions. Um, it's a pleasure to be here today um, talking to you all. Um, thanks for listening in advance. Um, I'm just sharing my slides. Hopefully they appeared. Um, <clears throat> so, okay, I've got thumbs up. Um, so this is just a quick run through of what we're going to look at today. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, the SDGs for anyone who's not familiar. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Open SDG and, and how that fits into the uh, global agenda. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about who uses Open SDG and give a, de a demonstration using the UK site as well. Um, we'll talk about the support that's available um, for everyone that uses our platforms um, and how the ONS has been involved um, and of course uh, sharing our contact details as well for anyone who's interested. Um, so many of you here I'm sure know lots about the SDGs already uh, but here's a little introduction for anyone who isn't um, familiar. Um, so the SDGs are a globally recognised framework um, that was set up in 2015 by the United Nations. Um, they form part of the ambitious 2030 uh, Agenda for Sustainable Development. Um, and a real key part is that we want to leave no one and nowhere behind um, in doing this. 
They've been adopted by all the UN member states um, and they aim to measure performance and progress across 17 goals, 169 targets and 247 indicators. And those are sort of grouped and formed under five pillars, people, planet, prosperity, peace and partnerships. Um, so this slide sort of just shows you the breadth of uh, the different goals within the SDG framework. Um, so with so many and across so many broad topic areas, uh, being able to report data and keep track of progress towards each one um, is really valuable um, resource uh, if it can all be um, collected in, in one place. Um, and that's for a variety of different stakeholders and audiences. Um, so I'm just going to cover a little bit about the importance of um, SDG data reporting. Um, so it's really essential to be able to report uh, data to be able to monitor progress over time. So the Sustainable Development Goals are an ambitious global agenda. Um, so reporting on these allows us to break down um, progress across a regional level, global level, um, and really um, see how we're doing against these goals um, by analysing that data. Um, and this um, impacts the next point, which is that we can really use that then to inform decision making. Um, so businesses, governments and organisations can then better understand the impact of their actions on people and the planet um, through this regular tracking. And this can really help them um, inform decisions to align efforts with the SDGs. Um, part of that is also being able to integrate um, SDG reporting into existing practices without having to completely you know, change every, everything we um, are already doing. We can seamlessly um, add that into um, processes that already exist. Um, and as we said before about making sure no one is left behind, um, being able to report data means we can also report data spatially and against other key demographics such as sex and age and ethnicity. Um, and this will really help focus decision making around certain groups of people where necessary. Um, but most importantly, just ensures that all um, voices from all groups are, are heard, which in turn will hopefully help reduce inequalities in this inclusive and collaborative approach. Um, and finally, as the previous slide showed, by reporting data um, across such a variety of different topic areas, we can gain a, a broader and a better picture of what's going on uh, on different scales. So um, each across the goals, there'll be indicators that are related um, across different topic areas across the framework. So this, by reporting data across all of those, um, that should really help us delve further into some of the complexities of uh, any issues, um, but also build links um, to be more empowering. Um, so really in summary, SDG reporting can empower different um, stakeholders um, to act, adjust any strategies and um, decision making um, to work collectively towards achieving the SDGs. Um, so many countries and organisations may already have a lot of SDG data collected, or some at least, um, but perhaps there's no easy way to visualise and, and interpret that data. Um, so this is where OpenSDG comes in. Um, so OpenSDG is, uh, sort of provides a, a template platform for users to um, set up websites to report their sustainable development goals data. Um, so they can customise these um, sort of templates as they'd wish, um, and this really just saves the hard part of setting up a website completely from scratch. Um, and each um, platform automatically therefore has access to all the key features available to report SDG data effectively. Um, so we've now got over 45 different implementations of Open SDG globally, um, and really they all sort of have an aim to inform their users of each country or organization's contribution to the global agenda um, and inform decision making for a sustainable future. Um, so I'm just going to whiz through some of these key features of OpenSDG. I think uh, Oliver very kindly uh, covered some of these already. Um, so the OpenSDG being open source and free to reuse is really one of the main benefits of um, OpenSDG. It can allow um, 
any user across the world to access this resource. Um, and there's no cost associated with setting up the platform or maintaining it um, in the future as well. Um, you can add any language that you like to uh, the platform and report your data in that language as well um, and maintain those translations over time. Um, you can also upload data in SDMX format, uh, statist statistical data metadata exchange for anyone who doesn't know. Um, but we can also um, upload data in CSV files and, and Excel files as well. Um, and really the main output is that you can see your data uh, spatially via maps, but also in charts and tables, and that data can all be downloaded readily from the site as well. Um, disaggregations, uh, so your data can be reported uh, with disaggregations as well, so that feeds into the leaving no one behind, um, like reporting on sex, ethnicity, age. Um, and the platform has been created with users at the centre of its design. So that's both in terms of the end user viewing the live uh, websites with the data on it, and um, but also the users of the platform that are actually creating the platforms as well. Um, and we also make sure that the sites have been designed with accessibility in mind. Um, so the all of the Open SDG platforms really should meet the UK required website standards for accessibility. Um, and that's another way really of making sure no one is left behind because we want to make sure that everyone can actually view and interpret the data uh, easily as well. Um, and the site is fully customizable depending on the level of expertise of your team. So most changes that you can make are quite simple um, to customize for your country or your organization. Um, but more complex customization is possible if you sort of want a completely different look to what kind of comes out of the box. Um, we can collaborate really easily with others, uh, other users all across the world. So um, it's a bit of a, a community with OpenSDG, which is very helpful in that different countries and organisations can uh, ask questions and, and answer them for others as well, uh, which we're very keen, keen on sharing uh, that knowledge. Uh, and finally, we've got built in search engine optimization, so you can uh, be sure to find your website on Google searches or, or any other browser that um, your users might be searching on. Um, and there's also now a progressive web app functionality. So that allows users to um, sort of download the website as an app onto their phone. Uh, and if they really want to, they can access that offline as well. Um, so this slide I'll just really briefly cover about user research that I mentioned about user-centered design. So all of our uh, OpenSDG platforms, or well, the platform itself, which then kind of feeds into uh, everyone else's uh, websites, uh, has made sure to um, consider the different types of users that will be using that uh, website. So we've identified four key uh, user personas. Um, those are the concerned citizen, a con connected influencer, a fact gatherer and an involved analyst. And they will all have different needs from a website, but we've tried to make sure that all of those have been covered um, by OpenSDG. And also we do actively seek out the perspectives of our users um, across the globe because they will vary. And so we make sure that um, anything we might have missed or that can be improved uh, is notified to us um, so we can yeah, make the product better for everyone. Um, this is a little map to show um, how many users and where they are across the world. Um, we've got 11 different countries or uh, subnational um, areas within Africa that currently use OpenSCG. Um, not all of them have kind of completely finished their platform, some, some are working on them still. Um, but many of those we've actually, uh, at the ONS, we've uh, helped directly in setting up their platforms and, and helping them maintain them. Um, so I'm now just going to give a quick demonstration of the site so uh, people can see what it looks like. I think I just need to stop sharing and share a different screen quickly. Hopefully uh, you can see my other screen now. Um, but this is what the uh, average sort of uh, OpenSDG platform looks like. This is the UK's one as an example. Um, we've got the home page here where you can navigate to the different goals. Uh, so I'll just click in one as an example. 
Um, so when you click into this page, it, it gives you a breakdown of all the targets and indicators for that goal, um, which you can then uh, click on and you'll see how you can get the chart, table and map um, for that indicator uh, visible. And the maps are quite good. You, they're quite interactive, so you can click on different areas depending on the breakdown of your um, geodata and, and compare those as well. And you can see uh, for this indicator, we've got quite a lot of disaggregations too. So you can add those um, onto your charts and, and tables. Um, so you can compare the different um, types of data there. And I think as I said before, you can download all of these um, images and, and raw data as well. So users that need to actually be able to get into the nitty gritty of the data and, and use it for research um, can do that very easily. And uh, just quickly, we've got reporting status summary pages. So this summarizes how much of the data has been reported on the website. Um, and we've also got disaggregation breakdown as well for those indicators that require um, disaggregations as part of their uh, uh, titles. And you can add other pages as well. So we, we've added a, a page for related publications where sort of store all SDG related um, papers that we might have released or, or useful uh, resources. And then there's uh, other sort of pages. But this is the thing, you can add really whatever you'd like. If there's um, completely different uh, information you'd like to include, you can add that within some of the existing pages or create your whole own new pages as well. OK, I'll stop sharing and just go back to the PowerPoint now. Um, so that was an example of the UK site, but we've obviously got lots of other users across the world as well that have all done slightly different things. Uh, and the great thing is you can access all of the other platforms that exist on our OpenSDG um, website as well. So um, Germany, for example, they've been reporting on both the SDG global framework, but they've also made their own national indicators, which they report on a separate platform. Um, and they've developed a way of reporting progress as well to each of these goals based on weather symbols. And so that's a bit of a different way of, of representing um, progress. Uh, and then over on the right hand side now, we've just got three examples of, of different layouts. Um, all of the websites just screenshotted on this page have used uh, multiple languages as well. So you can change between each of those. Um, and yeah, I've sort of customized it based on, on their design preferences. Um, so now just to talk a little bit about the support available. So we have a, uh, a range of videos available on YouTube, which um, can help you get set up on your on your platform, um, but also um, other kind of related videos about upgrades. Um, as we uh, upgrade OpenSCG um, with any fixes or improvements to um, the platform. And um, any other videos that might be useful can all yeah, be found on YouTube. Um, but really, the, the key central point for all guidance is um, our Read the Docs page. So this is just a set, a set of pages which um, really outline all the different um, configuration settings for the, both your site and your data. Um, so any anywhere, sorry, anything you want to change, really, uh, there's guidance written and summarised in these pages. Um, so... OpenSDG platforms are run through GitHub, which um, some of you might have experience in before, but um, many people who use OpenSDG have never had experience with GitHub uh, in the past. And I'm actually an example of one of those people before I joined this role a couple of years ago. Um, so we've made sure to design our guidance um, to allow anyone with any any expertise um, to be able to use it. So um, at the beginning, especially with the setup steps, it really goes through um, the basics of how to sort of use GitHub to do some of these things as well. And um, so there's um, we we the platforms function via a site repository and a data repository, and those join together to um, make your platform. Um, and and hosting it on GitHub is a really useful way of of doing this because 
it allows access to your whole team um, to be able to edit and upload data, but also make site configuration changes as well. Um, and this is where the Open SDG community really um, excels because we've got discussion pages where I mentioned about um, being able to ask questions and, and give answers to. Um, so it's yeah a really useful collaborative way of um, maintaining your websites. Um, and now I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, how the ONS has been involved. So the ONS is the Office for National Statistics in the UK, um, and we maintain and develop OpenSDG as this platform for all of our users. Um, we provide all the written and, and video guidance for um, setting up and maintaining those platforms. Um, and we can provide additional assistance where needed. Um, so we've been able to extensively support some countries through uh, work with our international development team. We've got certain partnerships with different countries, but we do um, help countries outside of our existing partnerships as well. And that's allowed us to provide some virtual and um, also in-country workshops um, to really give um, some countries a, a boost in, in upskilling in certain areas and reporting on their SDGs. Um, and we also collaborate quite a lot with other statistical organisations um, to make sure that Open SDG is as, as good as it can be, really. Um, and that includes working with the United Nations Statistics Division. Um, and we're also part of the SDMX SDG Working Group, which is uh, run by the UNSD uh, as well. Um, so this slide just gives a little summary of um, some of our most recent work that we're uh, quite proud to have been involved with. So um, recently we held an in-country workshop in Zimbabwe um, with seven different African countries, um, Zimbabwe, Kenya, Ethiopia, Cameroon, Senegal, Morocco and Uganda. Um, and this was run kind of as a joint workshop between UNECA um, or the ECA, uh, the ONS and the UNSD. So uh, the ECA facilitated the, the workshop, um, pivotal in uh, organising everything. Um, the UNSD delivered training on SDMX so that um, users were able to convert their data from maybe Excel format into SDMX format. Um, and the ONS delivered training on OpenSDG to get their platforms set up. So by the end of the workshop, um, all the participants really had the skills to convert their data into SDMX and set up their national reporting platforms for the SDGs. Um, and we've been working quite closely with uh, all seven countries um, since the workshop um, to make sure that there's um, continued uh, learning and support given to them as well um, so they can really make sure they uh, report their goals effectively. Um, so now finally if, if you're interested in using OpenSDG as a way of, of reporting your data for the uh, SDGs um, by creating a national reporting platform um, then please let us know um, and we'll um, see if we can help. Um, at the very least, there's all of the online materials um, that everyone has access to anyway to get you started. Um, and I believe there's a feedback form that will be sent out at the end of the webinar, um, which gives you the option to um, highlight if you're uh, interested in any uh, additional support. Uh, and there's also um, some of our email addresses there, my email address, my colleague Jules, um, Angelis from uh, the ECA, and, and also our international development uh, email from the LNS as well. Thank you very much. I say thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much, sir. Thank you very much. A very interesting presentation on the work that uh, you know you're doing on SI, but also the fact that we are working with you closely and the work that was just done recently in Zimbabwe, that's really applaudable. Uh, so I will ask the participants to sort of hold uh, questions. I know we sort of um, uh, went a little bit more than 20 minutes for Sarah, but that was deliberate because we wanted to give her uh, the start a little bit more time. Um, but for the subsequent uh, presenters, please, if you can stick within the the the, 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 the 20 minutes. So please keep the questions, uh, write them on the, in the, on the chat, and you know we will also ask uh, have an opportunity to ask at the end of the presentations. Uh, to, you know the three uh, panels that we have today. So this pre the second presentation is Kenya. Uh, and uh, we will uh, uh, again talking about SDG using open data and uh, uh, Sarah 
and Linda, who is the manager of uh, data processing at the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, uh, also in charge of data science and dissemination, will take us through uh, this particular presentation. She's pretty, very, very passionate, uh, passionate about um, you know leveraging her expertise to drive uh, you know meaningful insights and inform uh, evidence-based decision making. Um, you know, so this is this is something that she, you know she looks at it very closely as a bread and butter kind of issue. So we, to be good to listen from her. Uh, in terms of what they're doing at the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. But in addition to that, she's really among the uh, mm -hmm. the team working with the SDGs uh, data, uh, which is in Excel format through the Open SDG platform. Uh, and outside of that work, and she, do, she does all sorts of things, including hiking. Uh, Sarah, maybe you should all recruit us so that we can do hiking and you know, professional running and other things that you do on uh, extra curriculum. So Sarah, you have 15 minutes uh, to make a presentation. Could you please take us through it? Thank you so much. Are you on call, Sarah, from uh, Kenya? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you so much, Olivia. I uh, hope you can hear me. And uh, We can hear you. We can hear you. I've just loaded your presentation. We can hear you. Uh, but you can't see me because I see uh, my camera has been deactivated. It's so let me share my the... <laughs> Yes, please. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I hope you can see my presentation. No, not uh, yet. Not yet. Not yet. It's not loaded from my hands. We can't see it. Okay, uh, let me try to load it again. Can you see it now? Right we now? can see you. Yeah, we can see you and we can see the presentation. Uh, thank you so much. So, uh, uh, in Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, we are currently creating national reporting uh, platforms for SDGs, and uh, we, we shall be uh, reporting SDGs for the country. And, uh, that is my name, Sarah Mwikali Ndunda, and that's my uh, my contact uh, information, email, and my phone number. And I would like to start my presentation. So uh, I'll start uh, with introduction. I uh, will talk about SDG data and metadata in Kenya, in, in Kenyan context. I will also talk about capacity building and collaboration, which we have had throughout the season. Uh, the film. I uh, will talk about creation of open SDG platform, uh, conversion of SDG indicators in SDMS format, uh, reporting data on open SDG platform, and I will also have a conclusion. Uh, so, uh, Kenyan SDG overview. Uh, so, uh, Kenya National Bureau of Statistics uh, is a government agency which is mandated to collect analyze and disseminate uh, statistical data. It's also the custodian of official statistics in, in the country. Uh, now that means that uh, the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics is mandated to also disseminate SDG data. And in that, uh, we also have the responsibility of maintaining the national uh, statistical data, uh, uh, which is uh, related to SDGs in the country context, and that is National Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, uh, we, we do that through uh, regular updates and ensuring that the data is available and accurate for monitoring and reporting. Currently, out of uh, uh, 247 indicators, we are reporting uh, 120, uh, 168 indicators, and they are available in our website, currently in Excel format, and you can access them by downloading and going through so that you may be also aware of what Kenya is reporting and what Kenya is not reporting. So uh, several uh, uh, indicators uh, are customized has to mean that uh, our national uh, SDG framework is slightly different from the global framework. And that means that we are customizing our series to, uh, so that it may be uh, reflecting our national uh, indicator level rather than global indicator levels. And that is, uh, like, for example, I would like to give an example of uh, SDG uh, 521. Uh, that SDG uh, talked about proportion, talks about the proportion of ever partnered women 
and girls aged 15 years and above uh, who have ever uh, been subjected to physical, sexual, and psychological violence by their current or former intimate partners in the previous 12 months. Now, in, in Kenyan context, you find that apart from what is being uh, reported in the global framework, we are also repo uh, reporting all the three violence uh, together. That means that apart from uh, reporting physical, sexual, and psychological separately, we are reporting physical, sexual, and psychological together as well. And that means because the indicator is not, uh, is not available in the uh, global uh, framework, then we have to uh, include it and include the series there so that we may be able to report the condition in our country. Yes, that indicator is in line with 521, but the series is not available. So we have to customize the series. We also have uh, indicator uh, 1121, which talks, uh, uh, talks about the proportion of population that has convenient access to public transport. In, in the country, we are also reporting at the city level, Nairobi, Mombasa, Nakuru and Kisumu, you can be sure that's not available in the global framework. So in that case, we also have to uh, also um, uh, uh, customize the series and also include the cities uh, as part of the code at the subnational level. And that uh, uh, means that in our, uh, uh, when we are, we, we are customizing our DST data structure definition for our country, then we have to consider all that and come up with new series codes to report our current situation in the country, which may not be exactly the same as the global level. Uh, our sources of data, we have Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. Uh, we also have ministries, departments, and agencies, which are part of NSS. Kenya National Bureau of Statistics collects data through census. We also collect uh, data through surveys. And we also use that data for SDG uh, reporting. We have ministries, departments, and agencies who are part of national statistical system, and they also provide the data. We also have citizen-generated data uh, from non-state actors, and we also get, uh, get that data. And once we verify, we are able to use it for uh, SDG reporting. Uh, data from uh, National Statistics Office uh, system is uh, verified using Kenya Statistical Quality Assurance Framework, which we call KESCAP. And data from citizen generated uh, is also verified using the citizen generated verification criteria. That's to mean that before we report the data, we have to verify and make sure that it meets all, it meets all the required standards for reporting. So uh, our metadata, uh, we have metadata in Kenya uh, because uh, we have, uh, we are reporting different. Uh, we we are we are using different methodology. We are also having uh, different subnational levels, and so we have to uh, customize metadata to meet our situation. Uh, the metadata provides the context to help users understand the data. Uh, we also uh, specify in national concept understandings and definitions that differ uh, from the global uh, definition of indicators. Uh, we describe the data collection methodology, data sources, and calculation methodology in Kenya. And the reason why I put Kenya in bold is because it's at the national level. We consider all the methodologies, collection, and sources in the context of the country. Sometimes when you look at our data, maybe slightly different from what is being reported globally, and that's because of methodology, which is uh, for collecting and calculation, and also the uh, data sources. For you to get to understand the data we are, we are reporting versus the data which is uh, being reported globally, you have to look at the metadata and you get to understand the differences. Uh, we also specify any limitation and data quality considerations at national level. Uh, our metadata discusses data availability and disaggregation within the country. We also provide contact information uh, of the data reporters for clarification purpose. So in case you come across something which is not clear uh, for you, uh, you, you can also conduct uh, the, the providers so that you may be able to understand uh, the data which we are reporting. Uh, for us to achieve this, uh, we also recognize that we, we need collaborations, we need capacity building, and that's why for open uh, SDG uh, platform, 
ONS, uh, Sarah and James. Sarah is the one who has uh, uh, spoken be uh, before me. Uh, the trained Kenya National Bureau of Statistics in Open SDG Logistics, functionalities as well as account creation and the repository management. Uh, the training was conducted both virtually and in-house at the K uh, Kenya National Bureau of Statistics office. Uh, so that train, uh, training we started virtually when they were in their country. And at some stage, uh, they, they came to our country and uh, they, they continued the, the capacity building in our premises. We also had practical sessions, uh, which included uh, creating Open SDG platform. Uh, uh, after that, we had uh, uh, SDG, uh, SDMF for SDG dissemination uh, training, uh, which was uh, uh, done by UNECA in collaboration with ONS. Uh, and the training was uh, organized uh, at Preston Lodge in Arare uh, from 5th to 10th of May in 2024. And uh, we were lucky to be among the uh, uh, seven countries which were selected. And we had our, our participants uh, trained during the, that training. And the training covered SDMS information model, SDG, uh, DSD. DSD uh, means uh, data structure definition. Uh, we talked about uh, data, uh, data definition customization. We talked about uh, SDMX converter and uh, uh, data structure definition constructor, among other things. Uh, when I talk about data structure definition, that's to say that our data structure may be slightly different from uh, uh, what structure is being uh, used for global reporting. So we need to customize our, our data structure to meet, uh, to meet uh, the, 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 the uh, kind of data which we are reporting as a country. And that's uh, now uh, where our data structure uh, definition customization comes in. We also had practical sessions which focused on co uh, conversion of SDG indicators in the SDMX format. So uh, creation of open SDG uh, platform for dissemination uh there is a reason why we we, we, we are preferring open SDG over other platforms uh you can be sure there are a lot of uh, platforms which are available for SDG uh dissemination but uh one of the, some of the reasons why we are preferring open SDG platform is that it's built uh, exclusively with open uh, source libraries and tools that's to mean that uh, we, do, we we are not incurring the, the cost and I think nobody likes to give money for something they can get for free uh, it can be hosted and maintained using, uh, using free services. It's user-friendly with easy data visualization. Uh, Sarah has, uh, has already demonstrated that, and you, you, you've seen it's not hard for you to, uh, to navigate. Uh, availability of support. Uh, the fact that we have GitHub and we have uh, a community of users and experts, it means that whatever uh, support you need for open SDG platform, you always get it. Uh, we have an uh, open uh, SDG platform. Uh, it's very transparent and accessible uh, way of monitoring to, uh, towards, uh, progress towards SDGs. So it's very transparent and it's very accessible. So in collaboration with ONS, the trained KNBS staff uh, developed an open SDG platform for disseminating SDG indicators in Kenya. And they are available at that link uh, the fact uh, that uh, it's not available in public currently is because we are not yet done with it. So when we are done with it, you're going to be able to uh, access it from our website. Sorry to so interject. No, sorry to interject. Sorry, your um, I think your presentation stopped sharing. If you wanted to share it again. Sarah, you were done, right? Sarah? I don't think she was. Her screen stopped sharing. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, are you there? Mm, I think this, maybe she's trying to connect. Can um, uh, technical team please reach out to Sarah and Jinder?
Uh, Angela, are you able to reach out to her on the phone, please? Just find out. Um, maybe we, we jump on to the next presentation while she's fixing a problem uh, situation. Okay, let me call her. But I think the next presenter could be presenting. Thank you for calling. Hello, Angela. Hello, Angela. Hello, Angela. Uh, I'm sorry for that. I think I had some. Are, are you back, Sarah? Yes, I'm back. Okay. okay. Uh, how many slides um, are still remaining? I think you were almost going to ask the end, but uh, you sort of uh, dropped yes. off, stopped sharing. Yes, yes, I'm about to finish the presentation. Okay, so, if you uh, could just uh, continue, please. Okay. Uh, kindly allow me to share in uh, uh, in, in um, PDF format because go, I think, go ahead. Uh, go, go ahead. Of, yeah, go ahead, please. Okay. Are you able to see my presentation now? Not yet. No. Sarah, if you can email it to the stats talk team, please, uh, or either to Angela. Maybe we can share it for Marian. Thank you. Angela, this is AD. You, Angela, can you um, project? I'll, I'll, share it. I'll share it, Sarah. I've, I've already got it up. So I'll, okay. sh I'll share it quickly. There we go. We have it on the screen. You can go ahead. OK. So uh, that is our, put, put our, our, our presentation our, our, mode. If you can. Yeah. Sorry, it's just loading. Uh, sorry for that. So that is uh, our platform currently. Uh, as you can see, we have home, go, uh, reporting status, and publications. Uh, the publication side, that way we shall be putting all the publications which are related to SDGs. And we'll also have uh, uh, frequently asked uh, questions. And uh, kindly, this is a slide. And we shall also have a, a download. That means that when uh, we have put all the data, you can be able to uh, download all the data there it's like, uh, in a zip format, and you can be able to uh, use the data. So we also have contact information there. Uh, we have uh, X, Facebook, cookies, and uh, we also have uh, configuration. Uh, so, if you want to contact us from the, the platform, you can also be able to reach us. Next. So, conversion to SDMX format. I've talked about the capacity building uh, to convert data in SDMX format. So, uh, the SDG reporting platform currently uses SDM SDMX as input for visualization. SDMX is effectively, uh, effectively handles large volume of data essential for managing extensive data sets required for monitoring SDG. When you look at SDG framework, it's really uh, long and has a lot of input. So it means that there, there should be a way of managing. And SDMX is one of the effective ways of handling large volumes of data. It also integrates metadata offering context and information about data quality and methodology, which is crucial for accurate interpretation. Uh, Kenya National Bureau of Statistics currently the converting or SDG data in SDMX format for uploading to the platform. Uh, so we are not yet done, and uh, soon we shall be done, and we shall have uh, uploaded the data in SDG uh, platform, and that's now when we shall make it public. Next. Angela? Sarah? Oh, yes. Yes, so uh, reporting data on the uh, open SDG platform. Uh, here we have our data in uh, national SDG framework, which is in Excel format. And now what we are doing, we are converting the data in uh, uh, SDMX format. 
we are doing GSP definition and customization definition and, and customization to, uh, to meet uh, the, the, the kind of data which we have. And also ma mapping is uh, in SDMX converter so that we may get the data in SDMX format. And then with, the, with that, we are going to upload that data in OpenSDG platform for, for disseminating. We are, uh, we are disseminating the data to uh, policymakers, researchers, international community, uh, public and non-state actors, and among others. So uh, conclusion, uh, so uh, dis uh, dissemination of SDG using open platform will enhance accessibility and usability of the data. Uh, so we are, we are aiming uh, to have people access the data openly and also use it uh, for decision making and also for further research. We also, um, the process will also uh, simplify the data structure, thus making it easier for users, including policymakers researchers and general public to access, understand, and visualize the information effectively. You can be sure it looks very complex when you see it in the Excel format. And I'm encouraging you all to go and download so that you may uh, go through the data and also get to know what Kenya is equal to. And uh, when we, uh, we put it in the open SDG, it is simpler for people to access it and understand it. Further, publishing uh, uh, SDG data on open platform will increase transparency and accountability. And the transparency is very important in building public trust and ensuring that all the stakeholders are motivated to meet their target. That is one of uh, the reasons why we need to uh, have the data in open uh, platform so that we may be transparent and accountable. Because as I said, we are supposed to be um, uh, disseminating all statistical information and that includes include SDG. And so we are accountable for that. And now, the transparency will also encourage people to meet their targets and also make sure that uh, the public can trust uh, our processes and the data. Thank you so much for your time, and I'm sorry for the inter uh, interruptions. So thank you, Sarah. Thank you so, so much, Sarah. Again, an interesting presentation. I, am, I understand that the platform is not yet public. Perhaps maybe as we conclude, you tell us when it's going to be public. So without further ado, let me go straight to the next presenter in the interest of time. And um, I'll be introducing uh, Sarah, uh, sorry, Cyrus Depot, who is the member of the Social Statistics Director in Ghana Statistical Service. Again, to talk about really open, uh, open SDGs. Um, he's actually right now the focal point person for the national development, uh, uh, sorry, the national reporting platform for Ghana on SDGs, SDG budget and other indicators. Uh, he also leads a project um, uh, in, under the leadership of the uh, director, Omar Sedu. Um, so over to you, uh, Cyrus, please. Will you take us through the presentation? Thank you so much. Hi, good morning, everybody, and good afternoon. Hope you can hear me. We can hear you. Thank you very much. Good morning to you. Right. Oh, thank you very much for the opportunity. So I'm just trying to share my screen right now. Um, Okay, almost there. Still. Please, can you see my presentation? No, we, we can't just yet, Cyrus. Not yet, not yet. Uh, uh, I see we can see you, but we can't see the presentation. That's right. Uh, Sarah, I have a little challenge. Can you please share for me from that? From it, can we do that from here, please, uh, colleagues? Uh, uh, Angela? Yeah, I, I can if you want. I've got it up. Oh, please go ahead. Thank you. And it's Angela. Uh, okay. yeah. Angela. Oh, Angela's got it already.
side. Thank you. Thank you so much. So thank you so much for the opportunity to be on this platform. Uh, and uh, before I begin, let me quickly acknowledge my director, Aladio Masedu, who has given me this opportunity to represent Ghana Statistical Service. Uh, this narrative is slightly different from Sarah and Sarah's. Uh, they talked mostly about the platform for establishing uh, the national reporting platform on the Open SDGs platform and also the technical aspects. Now, all these are related to uh, what we are doing here in Ghana. Uh, so our narrative is going to be slightly different. Uh, so if you can kindly move to the next slide, Sarah. Can we kind of, could we kind of move to the next slide on the outline of my presentation? So we'll walk through this presentation, do a brief intro and link it to the legal mandate of Ghana Statistical Service, why we do what we do, and then align it to the advent of the Sustainable Development Goals and why we were compelled to start looking for other data sources to enable us to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. Then link it to the birth of Ghana's national reporting platform on the SDGs and other indicators. Then we also talk about uh, the importance or the essence of the collaborations that have led, head, led us here so far. Okay, can you kindly go to the next slide? And then what we hope to achieve. Now, so this presentation is premised on four major pillars. First one is that the Ghana Statistical Service the organization we work for here has the legal mandate to provide uh, official statistics, quality, relevant, accurate official statistics for national development purposes. And then based upon that also, the Statistical Service has the mandate to provide dynamic leadership to the national statistical system. Uh, that is the first pillar. The, first, the second pillar is that with the mandate of Ghana Statistical Service and as a member of the United Nations uh, States, Ghana joined the roadmap to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals in 2015. And that led us to the next pillar, which is, which is that in 2016, March 2016, with the adoption of the indicators framework, a Ghana Statistical Service had the mandate to start sourcing for the data to help Ghana achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. Now that leads us to the fourth pillar, which is the convening of what we call the Data Roadmap Forum in 2017 in Accra, Ghana. And at that roadmap forum, Ghana came up with several pri top priorities. And the major top three are uh, we needed to fill data gaps because we realized that the national statistical system lacked the ample data to help us achieve the sustainable development goals. We also realized that there was the need to encourage data use and then strengthen the entire data ecosystem. But if you narrow it down, the reason why Ghana bought into the vision of the open SDGs and the national reporting platform is that Data is better used and better managed and better uh, utilized when it's communicated better and when it's very visible. And when the data is very visible, it, en it, en it enables and it inspires users to also make good use of the data. And that leads us into the next stage. Could you kind of roll to the next uh, slide, Sarah? Why we bought into the vision of the national reporting platform for the SEGs. Now you will see this is a screenshot from, from what we have currently. Uh, Ghana's platform is live. Uh, it would have been ideal for me to do a live demo on this, but looking at internet unpredictability and instability, well, I just start with some screenshots to show some of the key features. So you realize that with the open SDGs and then with the support of ONS, we've had an opportunity to customize our platform in such a manner that it is relatable to Ghana. At the top left corner, you see the sustainable development goals wheel, but linked to the flag of Ghana. 
And then the top right, we have what we call the Indicra symbols. Or these are icons of Ghanaian origin that talk about our aphorisms and our beliefs. Now, this has been customized with the support of ONS in such a way that when you are uh, you are viewing a particular goal, the, any information on a particular goal, when you click on the Edicra symbol in the top right corner, it brings you back to the front page that we are looking at. And on the right side of the 17 goals to transform our world, you realize that uh, we have also customized the Ghana Statistical Service logo within the SDGs wheel. So that is a brief uh, on the customization of Ghana's NRP. So could you kindly roll to the next slide? So we are proud to report that our platform with the support of ONS and other collaborators is currently live and it can be accessed in two ways. Uh, first, you can go to the Ghana Statistical Service uh, website, which is accessed via statsghana.gov.gh, or we can access the live site directly by clicking on sdgs-ghana.github.io, and that takes you directly to the live site. Next slide, please. Now we're happy to report that you know Ghana began this joint this journey in 2018 when we had an initial launch of the national reporting platform during the African Statistics Day with the technical support from ONS. But with all the reasons and attributes of the Open SDGs platform that have been so eloquently shared by Sarah and Sarah, Ghana also opted to transition to the Open SDGs platform. Uh, with the support of ONS. Pretty kind of roll to the next slide. So ONS came in the country. We had an internal in-service training, which was uh, which was prefaced by earlier virtual trainings. And then within 2022, also with African Statistics Day, we relaunched the new and revamped platform with the support of, of ONS. Now we did all the technical Preparations that Sarah and Sarah have just mentioned. We went through the SDMX data training to enable us to be able to convert our data, make our data uh, exchange, uh, global exchange, easier to perform. And then also we, we went through the training on the data structure definition, constructor, the issues on how well it is to prepare the metadata that will be uploaded onto the platform. All these things, including team structuring and an entire audit of the entire platform before we pushed to live uh, during the 2022 African Statistics Day uh, program. And next slide, please. So far, we are happy to report that Ghana is reporting on 127 indicators. And you can easily access that now. Uh, but uh, let me also quickly add that this is a work in progress and we are still updating our indicators as we go along. Next slide, please. Sarah, could you kindly move to the next slide? Sorry, it's, it's Angela sharing it. An Angela. Oh, Angela. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you so much. So I have provided screenshots of the indicators we are currently reporting on across all the 17 goals. And I'm happy to report that we, by the grace of God, we have uh, information running across all the 17 goals, beginning from goal one, uh, where we see some indicators. Uh, could we kind of go to the next slide? Yes. Uh, goal three, goal four, goal five. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yes, so through all that, uh, can you go back? You move forward too much. A little backwards, please. A little bit more. Right. So I'm happy to report that so far, the highest percentage of indicators we have is with goal seven, which is on affordable and clean energy. 
and it's still work in progress and we are still updating uh, our indicators as we go along and we are hoping to do much more than what we have done now. And I'm also happy to report that I'm also happy to report that our collaboration uh, before we even get there for the 2022 VNR came from the national reporting platform as we have it now. But you can move to the next slide. Next, please. Next. Next. Now, in addition to what uh, Sarah presented, Sarah ONS, you realize that when you look at our tabs, front page goals, reporting status about guidance, frequently asked questions, we have added or we incorporated additional indicators uh, because we realized that those are very uh, essential to our national development goals. And the first one is the COVID indicators. And you will agree with me why this is essential because COVID came to change the entire world. So we have now incorporated this documentation on our national development, uh, our national reporting platform with a click of a button. We can have the documentation on what Ghana has done so far in connection with COVID-19. And if we move to the next slide, please. We have also incorporated a tab on the interface that talks about uh, uh, across the domestic products indicators uh, linked to all the social economic development indicators that Ghana is currently reporting on. Uh, the next steps, in the next steps, one of the things we'll be discussing is that, could you kind of go back to, to the previous slide? Right. We are currently in discussion with ONS to help us also include a tab that will enable us to report on the SDGs budget dashboard or incorporate an SDGs budget dashboard that will help us to track every SDG allocation and expenditure at the national and subnational level of Ghana. So that a click of a button, policy makers and data users will be also uh, view that. Thank you so much. Could you kindly move to the next slide? So the way we have structured our work here, we have done a kind of division of labor. And uh, when ONS was in country, they helped us to, uh, to refine this. Uh, because this work is uh, requires uh, great attention, we have structured our team into three. We have what we call the data and metadata compilation team. And this team is mostly responsible for sourcing the data from censuses, from surveys, and even administrative data. Uh, then preparing it uh, using SDMX, uh, SDMX processes, compiling the, the metadata based upon what the UNSD has provided, and then even locating any proxies to help us identify indicators that we may not have their direct relation to Ghana. And the next step is that this will be given to the data and metadata validation team who is mandated with fresh eyes to assess the data and the metadata that has been compiled and prepared. And when we have gone through the validation processes, we have another team set aside. That will be the third gatekeeping uh, before the data is uploaded, and this is the data and metadata upload team, we should also have the responsibility to fairly validate the already validated data before having final approval to upload the data and metadata. Next slide, please. Now, Ghana Studies Health Service couldn't have done this alone, and in collaborations, we need to uh, let you or share with you the major collaborations that have led us here so far. Could you kindly move to the next slide? Next slide, please. Now, this slide takes you to, or gives you a pictorial view of the role GSS plays in collaborating with all the major stakeholders that enable us to get uh, this work done. If you take a look at it, GSS, Ghana Statistical Service, is neatly sandwiched in the Implementation Coordination Committee under the SDGs governance structure. You see that we are surrounded by all these major stakeholders and partners, partners from the Office of the President of Ghana, 
as it is an advisory uh, unit, development partners, so on and so forth, moving down to the regional coordination council, ministries, departments, and agencies that provide us with administrative data, and then the metropolitan, municipal, and district assemblies, and so on and so forth. But we want to drill this down to the next slide, which will talk about how important, yes, uh, these collaborations are. So aside sourcing our data from censuses and administrative data uh, from the ministries, uh, departments, agencies, metropolitan, municipal, and district assemblies. We also uh, have other collaborations. To the next slide, please. Civil society organizations also provide us data, uh, academia, the media, and so on and so forth. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, we also want to talk about something very important in terms of collaboration here. Uh, if you listen to the from the beginning of my narrative, told you that from the very beginning, the onset from 2018 of the journey to this time onwards, uh, the Office of National Statistics, UK, has been very instrumental in the work that we've been doing and still very instrumental. So we need to acknowledge that. And I also want to acknowledge in collaborations that the entire data that has been uh, for Ghana's data for the 2022 voluntary national reporting. Uh, came from the national reporting platform. Now, the next step is that, as I mentioned earlier, we want to develop and incorporate an SDGs budget dashboard onto the national reporting platform, reorganize the national reporting platform team, retrain the team, and of course, keep on updating the data and the metadata, which moved us to the next slide. And then I'm happy to report that my director, who is online listening to me, Director Omar, uh, the entire membership of GSS also listening, and then, of course, all this bad who helped us to train the NRP team members uh, are shown in the next slide, which will be ending my presentation, when Otis came to Ghana on behalf of ONS to help train us. And with that being said, we want to acknowledge everything that you've done to bring us this far. And if you want to get in touch, these are my contact details. My name is Cyrus Pesci Dapo. And I acknowledge all the support by my director, Omar Seydu, and everyone else on the platform at ONS. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, Cyrus. Uh, thank you very, very much uh, for the presentation. Uh, Dana, again, very exciting when you look at the work that Ghana is doing. A little different from uh, what was presented earlier, but uh, you, you can see the, the issues that are, are, are pretty common and also the fact that SDGs, uh, in terms of driving and what needs to be done, it's really the core um, if we're to do uh, and bring the necessary changes uh, that are required in the uh, monitoring and implementation of SDGs. I again want to thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah, the two Sarahs um, that are here. Uh, I, I would like now to uh, open uh, uh, for questions. I know there are questions that, that are already in the chat, and I've, maybe we can deal with those questions in the chat, and I'm going to ask Eileen, my colleague, to just through go through those questions and then those that are, would like to ask questions, please, you could just raise your hands. Uh, in the meantime, I'm asking the in technical team to uh, share the link to the evaluation so that also as we do the questions, the Q&A, the evaluation can also begin to be uh, to start. So, Elina, if you could uh, go through the questions, please, that are on the screen before we open um, uh, the, the, the Beverly for those that are willing to ask questions. Yeah, thank you, uh, Oliver. So basically, the questions in the chat box has been answered by uh, Sarah and uh, the two, Sarah and Zara. So, but in the Q and A, there are two questions. One is from Class Manelesi, uh, whether is it possible to have an? I think um, if if Klasa Manelesi is online, so is maybe he wants to raise it himself, but just in case. Is it possible to have an open SDG reporting platform internationally where each country would have access to the open SDG platform to insert and update data from their different countries? This will allow all of us in different countries to update one central hub of information other than customizing uh, open SDG. And then the second question is, there was a comment already from... Uh, uh, and the uh, other question is from Onyango Michael. 
on how how can digital tools and technologies be leveraged to enhance the reporting process. I think this is also for all the speakers. And then number three is do the UK data link to other country data given uh, given we saw a global map. Is it linked to the UN global um, SDG? So uh, colleagues and uh, presenters, this question, can you can see it from the Q&A, but um, Oliver, I turn over the mic to you. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. So I'll ask the presenters to uh, respond, but before we do that, I would like to request the colleague from UNHCR Egypt office. If you could kindly, and I'm kindly asking, if you could kindly remove the comments put in the chat box. Um, I'm not going to make reference uh, to what because I don't want to uh, let others may, may not have seen it. It has nothing to do with this. We don't want to abuse this platform. Uh, this, this platform, as we heard from the uh, uh, my introduction, is about demystifying statistical concepts. It's about sharing experiences. So please, if you could kindly remove what you've put on the screen, please. Would appreciate it. UNHCR Egypt office, please. Uh, in the meantime, as he or she is removing uh, that particular comment, I am asking uh, Sarah, uh, ANS, uh, Sarah uh, from uh, KNBS, and uh, Cyrus from uh, GSS to uh, react. Who would want to react to those three questions before we open the floor for verbal comments? Um, I can comment on on some of uh, the questions that are in there. So um, I've given a, a quick sort of explanation uh, for the first question about um, having one open SDG platform internationally. And um, that's a, a lovely idea. I think it would take someone to sort of volunteer for that role to to coordinate it, um, which uh, we haven't had a, a desire for um, so far. But we have had um, regions and kind of and I talk about regions on a sort of multiple country level uh, basis that have uh, done something similar. So um, Central Asia, for example, and I've linked their platform uh, in the response, um, have set up uh, a summary sort of open SDG page for five Central Asian countries. And, and most of them actually have their own reporting platforms as well. So it's like, I think it's sort of similar to what um, you were insinuating that countries can still have their own um, areas to go into loads of detail, but if um, uh, other a sort of broader open SDG platform um, can sort of com uh, summarise um, trends between different um, similar countries or uh, highlight the differences as well. Um, I don't know if someone else wants to chip in. The question about um, digital tools and technologies leveraged to enhance the reporting progress uh, process. I'm sure uh, lots of people have good ideas um, on that. Um, Sarah and, and Cyrus, do you have any um, input? Yes, uh, let me talk about uh, digital tools and technologies in the leveraging and the enhancing reporting process. Okay, uh, uh, I would like to talk about non-traditional data methods like using big data and also using uh, GPIS and uh, uh, mobile data in a second. That is uh, uh, another source of data which we can uh, think about in uh, bridging the gap between the data we are reporting currently and the data we would like to report. Also, uh, SDMX tool is also a technological tool in the, uh, we, you can link uh, uh, different platforms using API. And you can also use uh, the data which you are reporting with uh, SDMX to share across different regions and different users. That's uh, uh, another way of sharing the data using technology to make sure that uh, different uh, government organizations and entities are able to uh, also disseminate uh, the same data in the platform. Uh, we also have uh, dashboards, we also have uh, uh, you know, um, collaborative uh, platforms. Uh, which you can also utilize uh, in capacity building. Like right now, we are using technology uh, also in uh, in sharing the information because we are we are using uh, Microsoft uh, Teams, and it's a it's a, a technological tool. So uh, we can also use those technologies in capacity building each other and trying to reach out uh, to more people and uh, making sure that uh, SDG uh, data and dissemination is well spread. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah, do you want to add anything? Oh, you're okay with the 
Oh, yes. Uh, uh, just a brief one. Um, so Sarah with an A and Sarah with an E have virtually uh, shared everything that we could possibly just uh, just to add that with the digital tools are very also essential because without that, uh, we will be limited in very critical and essential opportunities like um, visualization. And then may I also add that more, more than ever, we are leveraging on data science as we go along to ensure that we're able to meet uh, these objectives. So uh, technologies, digital tools are very, very important in the work that we do. As a matter of fact, indispensable in the work that we do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Cyrus. I think uh, there's a hand, I think. Um... Is a hand, I think, from uh, Chandran. Can you please uh, um, go ahead and uh, ask the question? Chandran? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi, hi. hi. I'm, I'm Chandrani from Mauritius. I have a question regarding the data platform. In fact, it is very, it is very, very interesting, and it is a very productive session as well. But I wanted to know that using the data platform, I can understand that we can upload our national data. But very often, policymakers they want to compare the national data with international country comparison. So, is it feasible that? on the same platform, can we have access to, together with our data, we can have access to UN global database for comparison purposes? Um, that's a, a really um, interesting question, actually, because um, we are actually thinking of implementing that as a um, feature into Open SDG. So it, it is possible. Um, it's just not available at the moment. But um, we'll hopefully be working on this in the next few months um, because, yeah, there is a useful demand for um, that comparison. Um, so yes, watch this space. Hopefully, it will become um, a live feature um, in, the, in the coming few months or so. Mm. Let me just add to that response. Well, that's a very important question, and sometimes can create confusion mm -hmm. um, when we have two data sets. So when we have two data sets, uh, one is going to be the national, and the other one is going to be international. As you know, international data is harmonized. And there are a lot of treatments that go to that data. And sometimes you don't see the data, the two data set may not necessarily be the same on certain not 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 really not, not, not that they might not be. They are not the same in many cases. Uh, so it will be important that when we create those two kind of surveys for comparisons, we put enough uh enough metadata to explain. Because then if one lands on the national data and looks at the other international, there's a difference, we should be able to do that. I would also argue that um, for the international data, we collect as much metadata around it so that uh, people can be clear in terms of the methodology, because otherwise we will create a situation where, uh, you, know, uh, you know, the two data sets are the same and they just, you know, they do that set, they're talking about the same thing, but they're different in terms of data. So we need to be extremely careful uh, uh, as we post that kind of data, yeah. Uh, Angela, I saw you wanted to say something. Yeah, I fully agree with you. I fully agree with you that there are some standardization uh, doing for some kind of adjustment with uh, with international data. But uh, I think, especially for policymakers, they want to know where where the countries stand at the international uh, level. But Still, we have to put a lot of caution notes, but I fully, fully concur with you. But it is also interesting to, to know where we stand in terms of uh, regional and international level. I think it's also a way to create that room for improvement for- I'll, I'll uh, call you, I mean, the meeting is cool. Yeah, 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 thank you, thank you. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you, any, uh, any Angela, did you want to add? Angela? Um, Director, I think you did cover the aspect of uh, 
harmonization that brings about the difference. Yeah, but uh, at the regional level, there is um, what we do on uh, assessing SDGs for the region, and uh, we also do for countries as well. The only difference is that the targets that we use are uh, the average for the region. Yeah, so just to let people know that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I don't see any other hand. Um, in other hand, I uh, I will ask the presenters as we close, perhaps uh, starting from Cyrus, um, if you have anything that you want to add. And of course, I would want to ask Angela. Angela manages our SDGs. Uh, maybe we might also, Angela, just to say a little bit in terms of uh, uh, what you've already started talking about this issue of comparison and how we are harmonizing the data and why it is important that the you know the, the data is provided as, as quickly as possible from the countries to ensure that um others don't impute uh, the data for them in other ways they you know they should be able to to do their own narrative rather than someone else to do it so let me start with the uh, cyrus and then sarah with e and sarah with a and then with angela Cyrus, closing remarks. Okay. Oliver, thank you so okay. Thank you so much. So in uh, some just some quick minutes, uh, the work we've done so far tells us now more than ever the importance of ensuring that we stay on course in trying to achieve the 2030 agenda as much as possible. And the national reporting platform is the most visible way to draw policy makers. Uh, policy implementers attention to the fact of how well we are doing as a nation and even as a global village. So more than ever, the national reporting platform is so crucial. Uh, so as we move forward, uh, uh, Stop Ghana has uh, re-inspired us um, on this side of the globe. And uh, I'm sure my director who is still online is uh, will be drawing some programs to help us restructure Structure some of the way we do things and ensuring that we stay on course. We want to also use this opportunity to acknowledge the kind of collaboration that's brought us this far and the importance of other members jumping on board to ensure that we have a visible platform that can help us track our our um, progress as we move towards 2030. So we want to encourage everybody as much as possible, every nation as much as possible, to jump onto the Open SDGs platform. And with that being said, Oliver, I can't thank you enough on behalf of my director, Alaji Omar Seydou, and entire membership of Ghana Statistical Service, and then the twin directories of the Social Statistics and, and Demographic Statistics Directorate uh, for this uncommon opportunity to share what we are doing on this part of the globe. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, Sarah with E. Sarah and Dunda. Uh, Sarah Besley, uh, maybe you, uh, while Sarah is maybe is organized, she's organizing herself. Please go ahead. Thank you. That's fine. Um, again, really just to reiterate what um, Cyrus has said, thank you very much for letting me speak to you today. Um, it's really good to always be talking about SDGs and, and their relevance in uh, our work um, and how we can make um, things easier and smoother because um, they are an ambitious agenda and they are really important, but um, we want to try and minimise um, how complex they are and kind of, you know, step by step um, we can work towards um, a more sustainable future um, and that all starts by uh, gathering your data together so um, we're very proud to um, run open SDG and, and allow a, a platform so that you can share that data with all of your um, stakeholders um, and yeah to get together we can help make a better world and um, that's all that I would <laughs> say uh, so yeah thank you again and please do get into contact if you have been interested uh, by anything that we've spoken about today and um, perhaps you've been thinking about um, creating your own national reporting platform uh, or something else as well with Open SDG. Uh, we'd love to hear about it. Thank you Sarah, thank you Sarah, thank you so so much. Um, Sarah and uh, Duna are you still here? Um... Otherwise, go to Angela. Angela, can you say a little bit about what we're doing? Angela? Uh, thank you, Director. Yeah, so the work that we do at the regional level, I've, I've mentioned uh, concerning it slightly, 
It is a uh, work uh, that entails assessment of uh, progress of uh, SDGs at the regional level, but I must say that one of the challenges we encounter is that of data availability, and it does limit the extent to which we uh, undertake this assessment. Yeah, because, um, for example, to have uh, criteria like, you know, data should be available for at least 40% uh, of the countries. Yeah, so if that's not the case, an indicator will be dropped out of the assessment. So this is just to uh, let people know that uh, data availability and, you know, making it accessible, filling up these gaps with all um, the available technologies that are emerging, those that have existed over time is really critical. Uh, as the SDS will continue to support countries in these endeavors, and uh, we really uh, hope that our countries will be willing to put in the work to do what it takes, because it's one thing to produce data, uh, but more importantly, it's more satisfying to have the data that you have produced used and reused and reused, because that's the thing about data. It just doesn't grow old. Yeah, so uh, just to encourage uh, our colleagues, that uh, especially those uh, that are producers of data, whether they are the NSO or other members of the national science ecosystem, to really um, uh, concentrate on, uh, you know, really putting the data out there. Yes, let's produce it, but also let's use the same energy to put it out there for use. And uh, indeed, as has already been elaborated during this uh, webinar, the, the tools are available, they are free, they are open. Uh, what we need to do is to put in the time to, you know, really put our data all in one place so that it's easily found and used nationally, regionally, and globally. Back to you, David. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, thank you, Langela. So colleagues, um, you know, um, uh, I just want to thank you for, for being here this today. And in particular, really what has come out very clearly here is a demonstration of how uh, the, 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 the use of open data source tools in the dissemination and reporting SDGs uh, has been demonstrated. I think that's been very, very clear and you can see the benefit of it. And I see a lot of uh, uh, questions, I mean, the, the, the issue that we raised in the platform, the interest around that. So really, I just want to call upon uh, countries uh, to customize uh, their own national reporting platforms for SDGs uh, and Agenda 2063, in, in a particularly uh, how these also are aligned with the national development plans, uh, uh, you know, on, 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 on this and allow the necessary evaluation that is required. Uh, I, I also wanted to, to say that, uh, to follow up on what Angela has said, is that uh, you know, we, we need to provide the data that, that if we don't provide the data, someone else is going to do it for us. And when it's done for us, we can begin to ask whether indeed uh, uh, the question is valid and whether the data is actually valid and you begin to complain who provide the data. And so let, let's take the first, you know, first leg in and uh, ensure that we have the data that's required. But I see there's a hand. Uh, someone wants to ask a question? As we conclude, someone wants to ask a question? Uh, sorry, owner? it's me. Um, it's Sarah with E. Okay, Sarah, yeah, uh, um, please quickly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, I was muted from uh, the other side ahead to restart again. Um, thank you so much. On behalf of Kenya National Bureau of Statistics and Kenya, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to do the presentation and to talk about our SDGs and the progress in the uh, I would also like to tell you that uh, you, you had told me before I finished I to tell you when uh, we are going to be introducing open SDG. In a month's time, we are going to have it in public, and uh, I'm sure that one is going to help our policymakers as well as the public in evaluating the situation in our country. Thank you so much for everybody who is attending and listening throughout. We appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah, for that. And uh, really thank you again for everybody that is here and uh, really for the feedback. Uh, the Those that uh, I've started already looking at the evaluation will appreciate that. I just wanted to ask that if all of us can put cameras so that uh, uh, technicians can take a photo of all of one that is uh, joined here. If you could quickly do that now, uh, we can all have our faces uh, as witnesses to this particular session that we participated uh, in this session. Please you put your, uh, you know, your camera on and 
uh, quickly somebody is going to do that. As we do that, I want to again repeat colleagues, this platform is meant for statistical issues. Uh, what has been posted by uh, uh, someone, I, I do not believe it represents UNHCR. Please ignore, that's not what we stand for. And we will not uh, allow this kind of things. I mean, what would have done, perhaps would have actually switched off and gone to another platform, but we know that if we had done that, we're going to lose a lot of time. Please, this platform is for statistical purposes. Uh, and, and that it should remain that way. It is not meant for any kind of campaigns uh, or any kind of uh, uh, trying to, um, uh, uh, you know, bring emotional issues. It, that's not what is intended here. And you, as mm -hmm. you have already seen, whoever posted that, that is not what uh, this is intended for. Please, uh, let's avoid these kinds of situations. Otherwise, you know, it, it could hinder our, our main objective, which is meant to promote uh, statistical practices, bring the statistical community together and, and do what is right rather than have to bring things that do not contribute or improve our lives. So thank you, thank you very much. I want to indicate that we'll have our next uh, webinar in the next literally less than uh, uh, two, you know, just about two weeks. On the 30th of July, we'll have another one. And this particular one is going to discuss about the strategy, ECS strategy on the transformation and modernization of statistical system. And it's important that you participate there because we also want to hear from you uh, and, and get input from you on the strategy that's being developed right now. Uh, we are actually in a session, as I mentioned earlier on, we're developing a new uh, mid-term uh, uh, framework uh, program for ECA on statistics. And again, just to hear your comments on this will really enrich uh, what is being done to improve statistical systems uh, and, and the overall uh, statistical development on the continent. So thank you, thank you very much. I want to wish you the very best where you are and we'll see you soon in the next uh, couple of uh, days. Mm -hmm. All the very best. And let's see if the technicians, so the, the people that organize have something to say. Angela, do you want to say anything before we close? Uh, Eileen? Everyone that uh, we have the evaluation form basically to help us improve the way we do things. So we would really appreciate if you take some time to respond to that um, evaluation. Thank you very much, everyone. And thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, thank you. Oliver and colleagues. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Yes.